Hey, welcome to another video. Today we'll be talking about adding vectors. The first method we'll discuss is the tip to tail method. It's just basically a graphical method, and you're just looking at two things and putting them together. Um, you should really find out, whenever you're doing these things, find out, find why it's so simple. I mean, tip to tail method, what would that imply? Well, we have a vector A here going like this. And tip to tail, tip to tail. Well, this has a tail. Let's put it at the tip, tip to tail. That sounds about logical, right? If that's what the tip to tail method is, well, then that should be it. Well, when you add those vectors, if you add 4 plus 5, you get 9. You get a result. Well, when you add vectors, you get a result. It's called the resultant vector. The resultant vector, in this case, is going to be drawn from one tip, one tail all the way to the other tip. This is going to be vector R, resultant vector. could be vector W if we really want. It doesn't really matter. It's just, just a way of describing that it's the, the addition of these two vectors. Now let's consider, what if we added the vector B on this side? It's still a tip to a tail. How are we supposed to know what side we're supposed to add it to? Well, You'll notice when you draw the resultant vector, if you did this really nicely on graph paper or something like that, you would notice that these two vectors here are absolutely identical. That's to say, vector addition is commutative. Well, you know from arithmetic that 4 plus 5 is equal to 5 plus 4. That's commutative. Addition in arithmetic is commutative. Well, in vectors, in vector addition, it's also commutative. You have vector A plus vector B is equal to vector B plus vector A. Simple, right? It just follows simple arithmetic laws. All right, so let's go ahead and do the next example. Well, we have vector C here. It's going up. There's our vector C. And we have vector D going at an angle. We could draw vector D here, in which case we'd have a resultant vector, or we can draw vector D here. So we'll draw it here in order to maintain, not interfere with the mess up there. So here comes vector D. Now to draw your resultant vector, you just start at one tail and move to the other tip. So here's our tail, we're moving to the tip, and we get our resultant vector here. Keep in mind, we could have added the D over here, and we'd have an identical resultant vector over here. Because it's not necessary, these aren't different due to the fact that they're in different spots. They have the same magnitude and they have the same direction. They're identical in terms of vectors. All right, so what about the third example? The third example, we have vector E coming out like this, at this relatively low angle here from the x-axis, and vector F is heading down. We could add a vector F here, or we can add it over here. We're gonna add it here just because of space and we get vector F here. Now notice tip to tail method. We put a tail at the tip, tail at the tip, we tip to tail. So here's our formula and we have this tip here. Here's a tail and we just throw the other one. So tip to tail, that's all you're doing. To draw your resultant, you go from one tail to the other tip. So you just draw the line in between. No big deal. And this will be our resultant vector for the third example. So, a recap of the tip-to-tail method. When you're adding two vectors and you're using the tip-to-tail method, you take one tail, add it to the other tip, draw a line between the two, boom, you're done. That's it. It's just basic, basic arithmetic. 4 plus 5 equals 5 plus 4. Same applies for the vectors. So, this is how you do tip-to-tail method. And we'll take a few more minutes to describe a couple more of these properties behind vectors. All right, so I mentioned vector addition is commutative. So if you add a plus b, you get a plus b. Even if you add vector b plus vector a, you still get vector a plus b. So it's like arithmetic, like I had said, if you add four plus five, you have five plus four, they're identical. So in terms of vector notation, if you take vector a and add it to vector b, it's the same thing as taking vector B and adding it to vector A. They follow that very basic arithmetic law. 
So vector addition is commutative. Clear. Good. Now, vector addition is also associative. So, if you have vector A down here, and you're adding it to vector B, you're going to get vector A plus B, yeah? That's obvious. Well, what if from vector, what if I took and added vector C to this vector, vector A plus B? Well, I'm going to get vector A plus B plus C, right? Yeah, I am. So, this is one way to do it, but this is going to be identical to taking vector B and to it adding vector C, giving you vector B plus C, this yellow one here. And we could do that. It's tip to tail. And then we took one tip and added it to the tail. And that's the addition of the two, vector B plus C. But to that, we add A. We put A tip at the tail of B plus C, draw a resultant line, which would be identical if my lines were identical to this resultant vector down here. And we see that vector A plus vector B plus C is, is the resultant here. So vector addition is associative. What that's saying is you can take vector A plus vector B, add those together, then add vector C. And that's going to be the same thing as adding vector A to the sum of vector B plus C. That may seem complicated. Vector A, B, and C all over the place. Well, let me ask you. If you have 3 plus 4 plus 2, isn't that equal to 3 plus 4 plus 2? So over here you have 7 plus 2 is 9. And over here you have 6 plus 3. Well, that's also 9. Those are equivalent. So once again, vector addition follows basic arithmetic. To add the vectors, you do the tip to tail method, taking one vector's tail and add it to another vector's tip, draw your resultant vector, and say, hey, if I wanted to add a third vector in vector C, I could do that. I just take it and put the tail at the tip of my A plus B, and I get A plus B plus C. So, important thing to remember here is don't get bogged down by the vectors. They're very basic and simple to work with, and they allow you to do very interesting things in physics. So try to make friends with vectors and just understand that it's just very simple laws you've already seen numerous times over and over again. Um, now you're just kind of adding arrows together, different size arrows. Now as we get further along, we start adding unit vectors. These will have, all have quantities and we'll, we'll be able to do a lot more with it. But it, for now, it's important to, to know that the vectors have this property. All right. Now, a good question at this point would be, how does all this relate to vector components? Remember, in a previous video, we talked about breaking a vector into its x and y components in order to do uh, whatever, it needs, whatever needs to be done with them. I didn't really go into why we needed to do it, because that'll become apparent soon. But I was trying to get you to understand that breaking a vector into components is nothing more than creating triangles and finding the lengths of the sides. Well, let's relate that vector component deal into vector addition. So, if you have your vector here, some vector, well, this vector must be the result of adding this vector, which we'll just call vector A, and adding that with vector B here. So just take notice, if I take vector A and I pull it aside, let's just say vector A right here, and then I take vector B and I pull it aside. So I have vector B right here. And I told you to add them using tip to tail method. Well, you would say, okay, well I have vector A here, so we got vector A, and to the tip of it, I'm going to add vector B. I'm going to take vector B and I'm going to put its tail at the tip. Or I could put the tip of B at the tail of A and get the same thing. Let's go ahead and put it here though. We're just going to take vector B, throw it right here, and we're going to add them together. So we're going to draw a line from the tail of vector A to the tip of vector B. And 
and here is vector v. So you see, vector v is the sum of these two components. So just as 5 is the sum of 3 plus 2, well, vector v is the sum of vector a plus vector b. When you're doing physics, it's easy to work with vectors when they're on one of your axis systems. So let's consider we're in two dimensions. Well, in two dimensions, we're going to need to break down our vectors into their x and y components, because then they become extremely easy to work with. So if you have some vector coming out here, some vector v, well, you should now know that's, that's nothing more than the sum of the x component, vector, vector a, and the sum of the y component, vector b. All right, so that's, that's another way to view how adding vectors works and also uh, another kind of justification for why you can break a vector into pieces because vector v here is vector a plus vector b. That's what it is. And if you look at it, if I was to draw a sort of scale here, and I said, this is my vector here. And this is one, two, three, four units out. And this is one, two, three units up. Well, my x component vector, if this vector extends four on the x-axis, well, my x component must be that four. And my y component must be that three. That's how high it goes. So it must be that. All right, so this is kind of uh, the introduction into what we're going to be doing in two-dimensional motion. Is when we're firing something off on the ground, let's say the ground's right here, and we're firing something off with some initial velocity here, well, we need to break it into its corresponding x and y components in order to analyze that motion. So that's why this is important. And you should know that vector v, hey, that's nothing more than the result of vector a here, plus vector b. Together, those create this resultant vector, this velocity vector here. All right, so thanks for watching. I hope uh, vectors are starting to make sense. Make sure you have a firm grasp on them before continuing to two-dimensional motion because it'll just start to be overwhelming and confusing. And you need to really see how simple vectors really are. I mean, it's nothing more than 5 equals 3 plus 2. It's basic arithmetic. You're just adding them together. And there you go. So remember the tip-to-tail method. Vector addition is commutative. And vector addition is also associative. Now, you can also multiply vectors. But at this stage, it's not really something we need to talk about as uh, we won't be doing that until we get to discussions on work and energy and such. So, have a nice day. Thank you for watching.